Time remaining in quarter number two. Georgia three, Kentucky nothing. The Bulldogs are going for it. Fourth down, less than one from the 32 of Kentucky. Bulldogs one out of seven on third down. One out of one on fourth down today. Quarterback like Dukes, you're always concerned about the option. But this is Tron play. Jackson. First down to the 15-yard line of Kentucky. Very similar sweep that Jackson scored on the opening offensive series against Vanderbilt for Georgia just last week. You see eye formation, you need somebody upfield. Let's watch Andre Smith. He usually does an excellent job of getting somebody on the ground. He knocks off Russell Hairston, allows Jackson to turn the corner. Another nice block by Andre Smith. Probably, I'm sorry, Bob, but probably two of the finest blocking fullbacks in the SEC right here with Smith and Derry. And Electron Jackson with an outside speed. First and 10 from the 15 of the Wildcats. David Dukes to Andre Smith to the 10 yard line. Georgia leads 3-0, now driving on Kentucky's defense. Kentucky stopped them down deep earlier. It's tough to keep holding them out there all afternoon. About 58,000 here at Commonwealth Stadium this afternoon. A stadium that's about 12 years old. It was built in 72 and 73 here on the Kentucky campus and a lovely facility for football. Second down, six from the 11th. Pocketty in motion. a yard and no more bringing up a third down conversion again Jeff Kramer the right linebacker number 53 the freshman with the stop that time for Kentucky there's uh, Vince Dooley we were calling him uh, daring Vince Dooley after going for some of those fourth downs and he's continuing with that reputation well that's that old ex-marine coming out and spent time with Quantico and Paris Island just look at the way he walks Third down for Georgia from the nine of Kentucky. Georgia leads three nothing. Jackson in motion out of the backfield. Dukes to the one yard line. Penalty marker is down, however, at the point at which Dukes made his cut. It may be against Georgia. Let's wait. It came at the point of a block. That looked a little unusual, Bob. I don't know if uh, someone went the wrong play on, way on that play. Or... It's a clipping call. There's Mac Gentry, the official. That'll be a big step off against the Bulldogs as David Dukes headed all the way to the one. Watch, watch Scott Williams on the play, Tim, and see if you can pick it up. Smith throwing there. Scott Williams comes in. It's not. It's one of those either or almost Open. maybe. Well, there's no maybe about the ball being moved back to the 24-yard line where it is now third down and 20. Third down 19 to be more accurate. Vince Dooley upset about that play. Rightfully so. In terms of being upset, he had the ball at the one-yard line minus the clipping. So now third and 19 from the 24. Hockaday in motion. Incomplete, intended for Archie. There was some contact there, but it was on the way to the ball. Calhoun covering. And Georgia will have a fourth down. Another penalty marker, by the way, is down on that third down play. One of the reasons that Georgia's offense has been effective over the last two weeks, we got a penalty against Georgia, has been David Dukes' ability to get outside. Now, Andre Smith has cut the contain man. That gave him the ability to carry out that rollout. That time, Jerry Reese got up field, protected his leg, got up field, and was in Dukes' face when he threw the ball. Downfield, lost it down, lost it down. There's the most spectacular signal by an official. An eligible receiver loss of down. Georgia will have to kick, and here comes Kevin Butler. Remember, he does have a deep bruise on the right side of his kicking knee, was not expected to play. But prior to the game, we saw him hitting field goals from distances further than this one will be. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Kevin Butler. You might ask yourself how a kicker gets hurt in practice. Two men were rushing the kicker, kind of feigning, trying to block a kick. They ran into each other, then ran into Butler. Plenty of distance on it. It is no good, however, and Butler misses wide to the right side. Georgia's lead remains at three with 5.31 to go in the second.
second quarter, and Kentucky will take over possession at the 29-yard line. The Wildcats dodge a bullet. As a matter of fact, uh, Georgia kind of shot themselves in the foot with the penalties there. This is Turner, Network Television. <laughs> hey, let me bum a chew of your beech nut, huh? You're going to like that balanced taste. Balanced? Balance? Mm hmm See, some chewing tobacco's lean to the sweet side, while others lean to the hard side. Even bite. But my beech nut's got balanced taste. Just right. Give me some of that balanced taste. <laughs> I'm tired of travel. Balanced taste. That beech nut red and refreshing wintergreen. In Tech's 1972 confrontation with South Carolina. Great touchdown run, Randy. Oh, I enjoyed all 96 yards, Dr. Sid, just like you enjoyed that Big Tech victory in the 1951 Orange Bowl. Right, but we both learned something very important. That's right. There is life after football. That's why you established Life Chiropractic College. Exactly. Life Chiropractic College helps prepare professional careers for qualified people like you. Dr. Sid, you think we could see that run again? Absolutely. I like Tech's touchdown. Ah, you did it again, right? That was a great run. Second quarter action, Rutgers at Boston College. Boston College punting out of their end zone, and Dan McHarris really turns things around for Rutgers. A beautiful 44-yard return on this punt return, and surprisingly, Rutgers ties up Boston College first quarter 7-7. Seven to seven. Back to Bob. Well, as we said, Tim, uh, Kentucky can tell you that Rutgers is tough, and Boston College will be able to tell you that today. Some other scores here at Georgia, 3-0 in the second quarter. Navy and Pittsburgh tied in the second period. Maryland out in front of Duke, 14-0. Steve Sloan suffering at Duke this year, and Ohio State, Wisconsin, nothing, nothing, and the rain is really coming down in that game, we understand. Baylor leading Texas Christian by a score of 7-0. 531 to go, second quarter here. Georgia, 3, Kentucky, nothing. Wildcat ball, Ransdell. George Adams, first down to the 46-yard line. Tackle made by Boswell and Kentucky in a snap from their 29 to their own 46. Pitts is working downfield. You see him avoiding the jam a little at the top of your screen. Boswell reacting to the ball, thrown to Adams. Takes a little bit of a poor angle, but hangs on to trip up George Adams. And that's the difficult thing for Steve Boswell, the sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia, who's playing in place of Bill Mitchell at linebacker. He plays the run well, but his inexperience shows a little bit on coverage of passes. Kentucky may try to attack that possible weakness. Ransdell again. Same kind of pattern. It goes to number 80, Mark Wheeler, the tight end. And Kentucky moving the ball to the 49-yard line of Georgia. There is a penalty marker down in the Kentucky backfield, however. It's going to be against the Wildcats. Personal foul is the call against the Wildcats. By the way, while they step that off, I want to say that we told you earlier there were eight Bowl Scouts here. And one of the Bowl Scouts is Jim Meyer from the Fiesta Bowl in Phoenix. And his young daughter, Kristen, is under the weather. And he wanted us to wish her well, and we do that. Fiesta Bowl, a wonderful uh, activity of, out there, of course, in the stadium on the campus of Arizona State. And Tim Foley and I have been there. And a beautiful place, as you see Jerry Claiborne. Now, that rascal puts a lot of energy in the coaches. Tempo! Personal foul! Went to Maryland, the program was on the bottom, and he came around with his, with his some of the same people on the staff here, Terry, Terry Strzok, Jerry Eisman, turned that program around, and came here and brought this program from the bottom 20 up into the top 20. First and 19, Ransdell wanted to screen it left side to Adams, who was set up, but great pressure by Georgia. Chumley was back there, along with Jake Richardson, number 99, and Adams couldn't get his hand on the ball. There's Ransdell. Ransdell this afternoon is 7 out of 11 for 65 yards and one interception. But as Tim told you, this is a tough young man. Anybody playing college football is tough. But this man may be tougher than the other. He plays hurt. He's a tough leader. And he just really has the, uh, as one of the coaches says, has uh, kind of the heart and strength of a defensive lineman playing quarterback. Here's draw play. Adams gets nothing. Maybe a loss of a yard. Jake Richardson who has played so well at nose guard the last three ball games for Georgia makes this stop again the junior from Smyrna Georgia he is playing more and more each week it seems like uh, you know Henry Harris is also a fine player and now he's becoming Jake Richardson's backup well Kentucky got it out of their 29 yard line out to the 46 on that pass play but then 
the loss on the play, and now the penalty, I should say, and now it's a punting situation. And Calhoun does it again. This one is going to be probably shorter than the other one. They're going to mark this ball at the 40-yard line of Georgia. Not a very good kick by Paul Calhoun, only 23 yards. Remember, he was averaging 47 yards per punt coming into this game, and let's watch and see what happens, Tim. He averaged 47 yards the other day, and he had a 27-yarder kicked it out of bounds. He's letting the ball drop too far, it seems like. Uh, he should make contact with the ball higher up, and one thing you don't want to do is start, obviously now he's starting to think about it, and sometimes that can be your most dangerous enemy, can be yourself. Hope you'll join us at halftime. A lot of interesting activities planned for you. First down 10 from the 40. A little bit of a crack in the Kentucky game and gets out to the 48-yard line. Kramer making the stop for the Wildcats. So Tron Jackson, Lars Tate, Tony Mangrum have been sharing the tailback positions for Georgia today. And an interesting statistic about the Georgia tailbacks, you know, they say, who is the tailback since Herschel left? Well, coming into this game, the five tailbacks have outgained Herschel Walker in six games at the same point in the season when Herschel won the Heisman Trophy. Here's Tron Jackson. Good speed to the outside. Gets the first down a little bit more to the 45 of Kentucky. Calhoun with the stop. There's one of the reasons. Tron, they have a nice combination, Tim, the Bulldogs. Tron Jackson, the outside guy. Tate can run inside. Mangrum can run inside. I'll tell you another nice combination they have. <laughs> Victor Perry, Kim Stevens, Pete Anderson, Jim Holden, Mike Weaver. They got a lot of meat up front on that first down play. They moved the Kentucky defensive front five yards back before contact was made with the running back. First down 10, Georgia at the 45, the Wildcats. Bulldogs lead 3-0. It's complete to Anthony Quincy to the 28-yard line. The junior from Fullerton, California, who had been injured, had a knee injury. This is his first game back. This is the pass they love to run. Wide side of the field. Duke's going to his left. They force him to pull up. Dukes gets the ball in the air on time, puts it right on the target. And that's, that's, excuse me, Bob, that's just exactly what they like to do. They gotta run it, run a little bit, run that roll out, throw the ball, and then come back to the toss. And... Very helpful having Quincy back in there. Osborne a little bit injured for Georgia on the wide receiving core this week. And Quincy gets well just in time. Andre Smith with the carry down to about the 23-yard line of Kentucky. Clock down to two minutes and change and counting down toward halftime. Jerry Graber looks, he looks, he looks permanently worried. Well, you know, you like to see great performances from your great players in big games. And I'm sure he's concerned about Paul Calhoun's punting. It has certainly changed around the field position, and Georgia keeps knocking at the door. One of these days, Kentucky's going to have to answer it. Boy, they answered that attempted run by Andre Smith. David Thompson, the 245-pound right guard from Louisville, Kentucky, made the stop for the Wildcats. He's number 92. It'll bring up third down and six for the Bulldogs at the 22-yard line. They got down about this close previously, had some penalties, and a 41-yard field goal attempt by Butler was wide right. Georgia only one out of eight converting third downs into first downs this afternoon. Williams in motion. Pressure. It's complete to Scott Williams. Scott Williams close to the first down. Let's see exactly where they spot that ball. This will have a great deal to do with it. Paul Calhoun with the tackle. And they may have to bring the sticks in. They are on the far side of the field. Vince Dooley keeps saying, why can't we get six more inches so I, ha I, have, I can avoid these fourth down decisions? Most of the time he's made the right decisions, just look at his record. That's for sure. An incredible tradition that they've established in Georgia. And that's the mental set that Claiborne's trying to get here. See, Georgia expects to win. Now, Vince, you're going to give him a first down, and I thought you were going to have another decision to make. It looks short, but here's the replay on it again. Williams comes back in motion. Calhoun trailing him across. They're in blitz coverage, so Paul Calhoun's got Williams man-to-man. -man. 
can do any better the job there than Paul Calhoun did, but they got the first down. That saves Vets Dooley one gray hair. First down, 10, Georgia at the 17 of Kentucky. These Wildcats have been tough down here inside the 20. Georgia hasn't gotten it into the end zone with a touchdown yet. Lead three to nothing. 1.48 to go, second quarter. Hockaday in motion. Duke. It's picked up by Williams, who cuts against the grain. Touchdown, Georgia. No penalty markers are down, and that's going to be interesting to watch him diagram that one. The fumbled pitch to Tron Jackson. Scott Williams, who is such a heads-up tight end, picked it up, went against the over-pursuing Kentucky defense for the touchdown. Well, Scott Williams' goal this year was to catch a touchdown pass. Now, I wonder if this will qualify. You got to cut it on the first hop. That. Kentucky, obviously, swarming defense, chasing the ball. They're coming back, and David Thompson gets wiped out by two players, and that's it. School's out. Green grass, or blue grass, I guess we're in Kentucky ahead. Touchdown. Butler in for the point after. Bulldogs lead 9-0. point after is good. It hits the scoreboard, as a matter of fact, over the end zone bleachers, and Georgia does take a 10 to nothing lead. I think Butler's leg is probably okay strength-wise, but obviously a little bit sore as he missed the 41-yarder earlier today, and the Bulldogs lead 10 to nothing. And Tim, you, we talk to these coaches, and they plan, and they plan, and they plan, and they, they scheme, and then this happens. <laughs> it really has to be frustrating for the Kentucky football team. They've got the ball on the ground. Here you go. You got an opportunity opportunity to get a turnover. Look at all those Kentucky players around the ball. And now the Georgia players wipe out David Thompson there, and that's it. There's nobody else home. Kramer tries to get into the picture, but he gets taken out. Tony Mays hustling all the way from the other side of the field. Can't get there in time. That, that really is discouraging, and you're right. You do plan, but you know it all comes down to playing football, reacting, making decisions on the spot. And that's why when you talk to any of these coaches, there comes a point in time when they throw out the stopwatch, they throw out how much you can bench press, and they what goes into the equation is, is the kid a winner? Does he make the right decisions? Does he contribute to winning? Well, Scott Williams does, no question about it. It's uh, uh, Lehman Bennett, a former Falcons coach who still lives in the Atlanta area, played here at Kentucky. And as you look at Rusty Gillespie about to kick off for Georgia, and Lehman Bennett had a saying when he coached the Falcons, what goes around comes around. Scott Williams, who's played so well, yet been denied that touchdown, gets it on an unusual play like this. Little wind blowing up here. As a matter of fact, Tim, the skies are graying up some. And your pilot talk, what do you call this? This is IFR conditions, a setting in. Air Foley may be grounded. <laughs> oh, boy. My, my, my uh, spotter here, and the fellow that helps me assemble it, Max, Chip Miller, he's flying back with me, so I have a co-pilot. Don't worry, Danny, he's going to be fine. Chip shaking his head. <laughs> Here's the kickoff. Logan is not going to return it. Downs it in the end zone. The Wildcats will bring it out to the 21st. Down 10 with a minute 31 remaining. The Georgia scoring drive, a very interesting one indeed. Does that go down as a play? Is that in one of those plays that... I guess it is. Absolutely. That's one of the seven plays. The yardage, 60 yards, 2 minutes 57 seconds, and 16-yard run on the fumble recovery by tight end Scott Williams. So that was, uh, you might say that uh, uh, for Georgia, that was uh, uh, Keith Johnson to Dukes to Jackson to Williams for the touchdown. Just like Vince threw it up on the first down. George Adams. There he is cutting against the grain, but not much yardage. Only one. And... That's where the Bulldog defense seems to adjust so well week after week when they seem to face different kinds of de defensive challenges. This time, it's it's a not over-pursuing challenge. They have to find out a way to stop a runner who cuts against the grain, and thus far, they've done rather well against George Adams. That is the fullback, Chris Derry, who they can sorely afford to lose because he is singularly the best blocker in the backfield. Kentucky, they count knockdowns by wide receivers and by running backs. And you know, if you've got four or five knockdowns during the game, that means the man you're supposed to block ends up on the ground. That is a good game. Derry last week had 17 knockdowns against LSU. It is a talent and a technique to, to be able to fire out and take a man's legs out from under him. And Derry does that as well as anybody in the Southeastern Conference. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him go with George Adams at fullback now. 
Well, for this play, at least, they have uh, sent in, let me just double check who is back there, number 29, Tom Weary, a junior from Columbus, Ohio, 5'9", 196. Here's George Adams. Not much. Stopped at the line of scrimmage again. Clock down to 104 remaining in the half. Tom Weary has played very little this year and, uh, however, was an all-state back in the state of Ohio. He was injured in 82, just played a little bit in 83. He's the backup who will be blocking for George Adams, number 29. And I tend to agree with you. We might see Logan and Higgs come in to carry that bar ball out of the tailback position with Adams moving over because Adams can block very well. Double tight ends, Lucas and Wheeler for Kentucky. Third down eight from the Wildcat, 22. Ransville on the draw. Adams trying to get it on his own, but he's still short out to the 27-yard line. Tony Flack with the tackle. Clock ticking down to 27, 26. 25 and still counting. Georgia does have one timeout remaining if they choose to call timeout. They've done just that with 24 seconds remaining. So Calhoun will punt the ball away. He has had two poor punts his last time out. He hit one for 30 and one for 23 yards. He needs a good one here. Or Georgia, as they had an opportunity against Vanderbilt, can come back and hit you very quickly right before halftime. Well, they, they scored, I, I believe it was uh, 29 points in the third quarter last year against Kentucky. They, each time we've seen them play, when they score, they seem to score in a, a, bu a bunch in a hurry. It's like they only have permission to score during the next five minutes, see how many you can get in there. And that's what happened against Vanderbilt. Three touchdowns, boom, boom, boom. Vanderbilt entertaining Ole Miss this week in Nashville and SEC action. By the way, we will keep you totally up to date on all the scores at halftime when we go back to Craig Sager and Paul Horning at the Football Action Center. Auburn is playing at Old, uh, Mississippi State uh, in a 1.30 Central time uh, kickoff today. Notre Dame's at LSU this afternoon. Uh, Tennessee is playing at Georgia Tech. So the only real pure conference games are the Auburn-Mississippi State here, Georgia, Kentucky, and Ole Miss at Vanderbilt. There's Freddie Lane, who's back to take the punt. Freddie had a fumble in a critical situation last week, made his coach very nervous. Yes, he did. Bill Ransel is on the, excuse me, Bill Ransel's on the sideline right now talking to Jerry Eisman. He's down out of the booth. He's the offensive coordinator that calls the plays, and he's taking advantage of every minute that he can to talk to Ransel about what, what happened. Freddie Lane caught that ball at the 33-yard line. Clock goes down to 16. Good coverage by Tony Mays, number three for Kentucky. And with 16 seconds, Georgia will have an opportunity, no timeouts left, for maybe a play or two if they choose to go to the air with it. Well, I'm hard sorry. to tell what they'll do here. Yeah. Number 37 is in the game. Now, it's Stanley Blaylock. And, uh, if you're Vanderbilt, you know who he is. That's right. He singes the grass with his fleet as he goes by. And if I'm covering him, I'm lined up on the end zone because this guy can run. There he is on the bottom of your screen, 37. They'll try to get it to him deep. Here's Dukes, has good protection. There they're going. To third. Now they're going to Freddie Lane. Freddie Lane didn't get it. As a matter of fact, uh, I didn't see Blaylock. There's Blaylock. Let's watch this. What happened to Blaylock in this play? He looked like he was going to just sprint downfield. Tony Mays introduced himself to him. You see Tony coming in, and this is the best way to cover Whoa. somebody. Hello. That's what you call, officially referred to as a jam. <laughs> you get one jam. And when they're like that, that's all you need is <laughs> one jam. Well, yeah, Tim, that looks like uh, perhaps the way you played cornerback. I used to tackle him more. <laughs> <laughs> now Osborne, who's playing hurt, is in the ball game. Nine seconds remaining. Second down, 10, Georgia. And he's going to hand the ball off and run it up the middle with no timeout. That will run the clock down to the double zeros. Lars Tate gets only a couple of yards on that carry. At halftime, Georgia 10, Kentucky nothing. Last year, Georgia led, uh, Kentucky led at halftime, and Georgia came back to win the ball game. Kentucky will be talking about that at their locker room here at halftime. You stay with us. We have some interesting information for you at halftime from Lexington. This is Turner Network Television.
kind of rubber. Result? The Goodyear Eagle. Long wearing tires that let you take charge when taking curves. They said it couldn't be done. But we did it. Goodyear. Georgia leading 10 to nothing at halftime. The Wildcat marching band about to perform here and we'll be showing you some of that coverage in just a couple of minutes. You know, we talk about the football glamour positions of uh, quarterback, wide receiver, etc. The position of tight end is not really a glamour position. It's important, but it's often unheralded. Such is the case with our player of the week, Scott Williams of Georgia. When the Georgia Bulldogs scored 62 points last week, one of the only players not to score was tight end Scott Williams. However, when Georgia needed a clutch catch, they looked to number 30, and Williams responded. This diving reception on the Vanderbilt four-yard line helped to set up one of Georgia's early scores. But even more important to Georgia's offense, Williams graded 90% as a blocker, the best of any offensive lineman. This block helped spring number 32, Lars Tate, for a Georgia touchdown. On this play, watch number 30 turn in a defensive lineman to spring number 22, Tony Mangrum. Scott Williams fits the mold of a team player, silent but with good results. He had four catches for 76 yards. 62 points for Georgia versus Bandy last week, and the key to their offense, a young man who never reached the end zone. Our Southeastern Conference Player of the Week, from Georgia, Scott Williams. And what do you call it? Poetic justice today. Williams recovers a fumble, runs it in for his first touchdown. A 16-yard run here against Kentucky. He has two catches for 17, so he's continuing his performance, and he's moving into the ranks of the heralded tight ends in the Southeastern Conference. Now, before we go down to the field and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Wildcat marching band, we're going to pause to take a closer look at each of today's participating schools. More than six billion people will live on Earth by the year 2000. Two billion more people than in 1975. One of the essential jobs of a research university is finding solutions to mankind's problems. And one of our most compelling problems is how to meet the demands of the largest population increase over the shortest time in world history. We must provide food, fuel, and shelter for one-third more people at the same time our natural resources are being exhausted. The quality of all our lives in the future depends upon finding answers. Research at our university has shown how to use organic material in place of petroleum so that supplies of food, fuel, and fiber can be vastly increased. The University of Georgia, America's oldest chartered state university, is finding the answers our nation and world must have when tomorrow comes. <laughs> University of Kentucky scientists have assumed a leading role in many fields, including cancer research. The expected 1985 completion of the Lucille Parker Markey Cancer Center will provide a facility on campus where researchers and physicians who treat cancer patients can work closely together to fight the disease. University of Kentucky scientists are also among the leaders in the fields of biology of the aging, energy, and equine research, which will be further strengthened with the completion of the Maxwell Gluck Equine Research Center at UK. At the 
the University of Kentucky, projects are undertaken not only to advance knowledge, but to meet the needs of all of us. The University of Kentucky, where some of our greatest victories are in research. the Wildcat marching band on the field here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. William Harry Clark is the director of the band, the drum major Kelly Groth, the finance junior from Russell, Kentucky. And we're going to be hearing selections Jack Miraculous, theme from Indiana Jones, and My Old Kentucky Home. Let's enjoy the 260-member Wildcat marching band. Nothing until they got a lucky break on a fumble. Let's have a look at the highlights. The first score of the game, and what looked to be the only score of the first half of the time, was a 34-yard field goal. Kevin Butler playing with a sore right kicking leg. Hit that one. Later missed the 41-yarder. That was late in the first quarter. Early in the second quarter, Jeff Sanchez is going to be back right near his goal line. Ramsdale looking over the middle. And it's picked off by number 31, Sanchez, who returned it 24 yards. It was Sanchez's fourth interception of the year and stopped a Kentucky scoring drive. David Duke now looking for number 89, Anthony Clancy, who had been injured earlier in the year and is back and playing and showing some uh, offensive punch for the Bulldogs. And Tim, here's the play of the half. Watch the fumble from Tron Jackson on the pitch. The ball hits the ground. Scotty Williams picks it up in his own backfield, takes it back. Some alert Georgia players through some excellent blocks. And they got a, they got seven points out of that, not planned, but they'll take them. And these this series with Georgia and Kentucky has been wild in the second half of the past week and looks for the same. And we'll be back for the kickoff right after this. This is Turner Network Television. Good days start with great mornings. The day's looking new and bright. And you're gonna start. Nothing brightens your morning like Mountain Grown Folgers because Mountain Grown Coffee has more enticing aroma and richer flavor than any other kind. That rich aromatic blend is your best morning friend. Start you off feeling good. The day goes like it should. The best. After playing against some pretty tall competition, you probably think I shower the deodorant soap. Not anymore, because I made a break from deodorant soaps, a clean break with Ivory. Look inside, Ivory's a basic natural soap to give you an honest clean. Oh, I used to think deodorant soaps gave you the best clean, but when you think about it, they're leaving deodorants or heavy perfumes all over you. Those things don't get you clean, and hey, I use a deodorant anyway. Ivory's just simple, basic soap. So you feel really clean and you smell clean too. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. No soap can get you cleaner, no matter what size the competition. Now at your Renault dealer, 10.9% financing on every Alliance and Encore, including new Alliance convertible. Highly acclaimed Alliance sedan, 10.9% financing on Renault Encore. Hurry, finance offer on Alliance and Encore ends October 31st. Plus. See the new Jeep, America's largest selection in four-wheel drive. Now more than ever, the ones to watch are the ones to buy. Atlanta's AMC Jeep Renault dealers, the ones to watch. Well, there are the halftime stats uh, between Georgia and Kentucky. The prime of possession, really a critical stat there. 19 minutes, 25 seconds for Georgia. Only 10 minutes, 35 seconds for the Kentucky Wildcats. They just couldn't seem to sustain the drive. I think the, the big factor here is in talking to Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, he explained the importance of dominating first down. Defensively, if you can hold the offense to less than four yards gained on first down, you count that as a win because you feel like you still have them in a, in a at that point, a passing situation. If they get more than four yards, well, then they're in a run-pass situation and they can kind of dictate to you. In the first half, the Georgia defense controlled first down on Kentucky. Rusty Gillespie's kickoff lands out of the end zone in the air without being touched by a member of the receiving team. And all of that means it comes out to the 30-yard line. 
And there's the story of field position. Look where Georgia started at the 23, 17, 18, 5. Look at Kentucky, 19, 20, 45, 7, 9, 20. And then the last three possessions of Georgia, 41, 40, and 34. That is a real big difference in field position in that game. That certainly was. And although Paul Calhoun averaged four yards punting the ball, there were a couple crit crit critical situations where he wished he would have put more on the football. Kentucky takes the ball at their own 30 after Rusty Gillespie kicking for Kevin Butler on kickoff. Butler did attempt two field goals in the first half. Is playing in the game. Butler hit a 34-yarder, missed a 41-yarder as that bruised right knee. First down 10, Kentucky from the 20. Randall with some time across the middle. It is complete to his tight end, Matt Lucas, number 81, out near the 45-yard line. John Little with the stop. Now, Kentucky has been very tight cast in terms of formation. What they usually run out of this formation is the counter trap to Adams. They haven't been throwing the ball out of this formation. This time they come out, start the second half by hitting the tight end across the field on a counter trap pass. First down 10, Wildcats at the 45. Now they have some field position. If they can maintain a drive, slot left formation out of the eye, George Adams. Adams to the 50-yard line. About five yards. Carlisle Hewitt with the stop for Georgia. Adams had 36 yards in the first half. No TDs. He popped off a 19-yard run early in the game, and then Georgia bottled him up most of the first half. Well, I'm sure the Kentucky offensive linemen got together in the locker room at halftime because they're coming off the ball a lot stronger now. There seems to be a much better surge of blue in, in this second half. Georgia leads 10-0 opening moments of the second half. Wildcats got near the goal line, but Ransel threw an interception. Pops in the air, it's intercepted again. That is Steve Boswell, number 44, to the 49-yard line. The second interception of this day for Bill Ransel. And it can't be really called his fault. It popped out of the hands of the receiver. And the man on the spot, Steve Boswell, playing in place of the suspended Bill Mitchell at Georgia linebacker. Ransel goes back, sets up, tries to pop the ball here to George Adams. The ball goes off of Adams' hands, catchable ball, and ends up in Steve Boswell's lap as we look at it again. Thrown a little bit behind, but Boswell makes the catch. Well, the ball bouncing Georgia away in this ball game today. David Dukes on the first down, has a man wide open. It's Hockaday, avoids the tackle, gets the first down to the 37, 38 yard line of Kentucky's Wildcat, Paul Calhoun, will get credit for knocking them out of bounds. That's exactly what Kentucky obviously did not want to have happen on their first possession. You want to come out there and get something on the board the first time they have the ball, try to redirect the momentum a little bit. It didn't happen. Hockaday in motion to the top of your screen on the first and 10 from the 37 of Kentucky. And off to the fullback, that's Andre Smith. Almost popped it again. Got eight, nine yards to the 29-yard line. Steve Mazza with the stop for the Wildcat. And you know, after a while, you have to start wondering just how good this Georgia Bulldog team is. They are undefeated in the SEC, 3-0. They lost only to South Carolina. And they have been physically dominating teams the last three games. It's happening again here today. There's no question about it. Their offensive line is improving week by week, even though they're playing different positions. Second down two Bulldogs. There goes Hockaday in motion again. This is Mangrum. Gets the first down. And an extra yard or two, thanks to second effort, to the 24-yard line. 56 Frank Hare with the stop for the Wildcats. Mangrum had 23 yards in the first half. Tron Jackson had 24. And Andre Smith had 35. And Williams had 16, the tight end, on picking up that fumble and running it into the end zone for Georgia's only touchdown. The skies are becoming increasingly cloudy here in Lexington, Kentucky. Very pleasant afternoon. Temperature in the low 70s. First and 10, Georgia, from the 24 of Kentucky. It's the Mangrum. Mangrum to the 18 and runs into some blue shirts and stop there. Game of about five. Brian Williams with the initial hit for the Kentucky Wildcats. It's always fun to play defense for an offense that run for a team that runs the ball. In a passing situation, if you throw an incomplete pass, obviously the clock stops. Not as much time elapses while the offense has control of the football. Uh, Georgia put together a couple of long drives in the first half that 
Didn't necessarily result on points in the board, but ate up a lot of time. Second down, five from the 19. Freddie Lane in motion. The four goes back the other way. Hand off to Andre Smith, and he's hit behind the line by a penetrating Brian Williams, number two for Kentucky. Williams is a key man out there. He's compared a little bit, by the way, to John Little of the Georgia Bulldogs. Even though he's called a defensive end, he's really more of a rover back, a defensive back. 5'10", 200 pounds. He's a weak side linebacker, really, and the way they use him, he's almost like a strong safety, Bob. Claiborne looks at the scoreboard. Third down three, Georgia only two out of nine on third down conversion. Lane and motion. Mangrum, short of the first down. Tripped up by 96, John Dumbo from Troy, Ohio. And here comes the Georgia field goal kicking unit. Kevin Butler, who's one out of two today, hit a 34, missed a 41-yarder. This one's going to be in the mid-30s range. He's, he doesn't seem to be swinging with the same intensity, and that's obviously due to the injury. And if he's going to miss, he'll probably miss to the right. You know, he's not coming through all the way as he did earlier on. And you saw that when he missed the 41-yarder. Has the tape around his right knee. This one is 33 yards out. It's a plenty hard. This one is good. A 33-yarder for Kevin Butler. He's two out of three on the day. Georgia glad to have him back after the injury. It is Georgia 13, Kentucky nothing. 10.48 to go third quarter from Lexington. There we were in no man's land When the moving truck died in the sun and the sand So since it seemed we'd be a while We set up house and we waited in style And we waited and we waited, and we waited. Now I know Ryder with some newer. They're tougher, they're strong. And driving a bargain sure didn't pay. So next time I'll think this way, it's Ryder or it's wrong. This bud's to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. This bud's for you. There's no one else. Distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, yeah, 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 yeah. this one's for you. There's the Bulldog scoring drive. Seven plays, 33 yards. That came after the Bulldog interception. When Steve Boswell picked off a deflected pass. Then a 33-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. And we have the 13 to nothing. Georgia lead over Kentucky, and Georgia kicking off to Kentucky again. The Wildcats have moved it right out to midfield. There's Rusty Gillespie's kick. It's a good one, right in the middle of the end zone. Here comes Logan. Mark Logan down the sideline. Out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Way back at the 23 is where he stepped out. David McCluskey, Georgia's special teams leading tackler, made the stop. Here's a great view. Great you shot. play the kicker. Yeah, a great, <laughs> great shot of it coming down to Mark Logan. And the, th the thing to do in that situation is probably to down the ball and get it on the 20. George had an opportunity to, if it wasn't for a couple of fine blocks, to get him tackled around the 10-yard line, and then Kentucky really would have been in a hole. But they're out to the 23. On a first down 10. Richardson, 76, Chumley. Also 44, Boswell back there. But Chumley and Richardson really creating the pressure right up the chute. Carlisle Hewitt makes this play, Bob. Calls off from his end position. This is a screen to Adams. They're supposed to let those men, Chumley and Richardson, come up the middle and uh, try to dump the screen to Adams. And Hewitt is in his back pocket, so Ramsdale has to eat the ball. Second down, 16 from the 17-yard line for Kentucky now. Audible at the line of scrimmage, obviously, by Ransdell. Pulls up quickly and throws it. Leaping grab. 
by Joe Phillips, his first catch of the game, a gain of about six on the play, one yard past the original line of scrimmage. It will bring up third down nine. Joker Joe Phillips, they call him. One TD, 13 catches. He's the leading receiver among the wide receivers, but he's been shut down here this afternoon. They don't seem as though they've directed their offense to the wide receivers this, this afternoon, Bob. They've thrown it more inside, it looks like. This is third down eight, and Kentucky has not converted a third down into a first on six attempts thus far today. Ransel pressure again. Throws under pressure. It's incomplete, almost picked off by Kevin Harris. But boy, the quarterback pressure by Greg Waters, number 59, coming out of that right defensive end position, shooting right at Ransel, and he is getting banged around mercilessly today by the Georgia defensive pressure. And he has had a problem with the, the cartilage in his rib. Once in a while, your rib get a little separated. You take a, sh a shot, a helmet in the rib, and it can be really a painful thing. And it seems as though it's beginning to bother him a little bit. Calhoun into punt on fourth down eight. Stands just about his 11-yard line. He needs a long one here. And gets it. Jimmy Harrell has to go back to his 20-yard line. Gets it to the 27, and down he goes. Good punt coverage by 80 Mark Wheeler. That was a 55-yard punt by Paul Calhoun. He would like to have had a couple of those earlier today. 9.02 to go in third quarter. Georgia 13, Kentucky nothing. This is Turner Network Television. What do you take when you have a headache? Goodies Extra Strength Tablets. When the pain is extra strong, get Goodies Extra Strength Tablets with the two pain relievers doctors recommend most. Here's what I take now. Goodies Extra Strength Tablets. I get some real headaches in my job, but this sure makes me feel better fast. It costs less, too. This one's got it all. Get the best headache relief you can buy without a prescription. Goodies. With Goodies Extra Strength Tablets. Goodies Extra Strength Tablets. At last, there's a great selection of hair dryers a man can call his own. Black Tie. The grooming tools from Black & Decker. With the right heat and airflow for a man's drying and styling needs. Attachments designed for the shorter hair men have. A concentrator for spot drying. One for men who travel. And they're black and decker dependable. Get a hair dryer you can call your own. New black tie. The grooming tools from black and decker. Ooh, what hair. Tim, Jerry Claiborne's Wildcats. 9 of 15 for 88 yards. Two interceptions. Their leading rusher, Adams, has only 40 yards, 41 yards in the game. What do they have to do to get this offense going, Kentucky? I think, Kentucky, you're going to see them opening up a little bit more. They came out, ran a play pass on first down. You'll probably see a little bit more of that. Ransom, they just have to give them time to throw the ball. They may come with two tight ends to give them a little bit more time back there. Now they've got to stop Georgia. Here's Dukes. Incomplete. He wanted to go to Freddie Lane at about the 45-yard line. Lane had trouble in traffic on the far sideline. We're going back to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. Okay, Bob, this is play action. Colorado quarterback Craig Keenan, an 80-yard bomb to Ron Brown. They trailed by eight. They score here. They went for a two-point conversion, tied it up with the very next possession. Oklahoma State scored. They now lead Colorado 15-8, second quarter. Back to Bob. Lars Tate in the ball game for Georgia now. Second down, 10 from the 26. David Dukes on the option. Tate down at the 20. He slipped down, but the, one of the reasons was the excellent penetration from the right tackle spot of Jerry Reese, number 54, the freshman who's having to play for Jeff Smith. I'm not sure that you're going to see this play again. This is the third time George has run it. The first time, uh, it's kind of inconclusive results. The last time, the ball was on the ground, and that time, I lost four yards. Youngster was Kentucky's defensive player of the week last week in the loss to LSU. Playing very well again today. Third down, 15, Georgia, from the Bulldog 21 yard line. The Wildcat crowd coming to life now. Handoff to the tailback. Lars Tate stops at the 25. Georgia will have to give up the football. Good adjustment by the Kentucky defensive coordinator, Terry Strzok. They had been running back into the sideline from a wide side formation. That time he had his Kentucky defense ready to play. Georgia will punt the ball away. In will come Chip Andrews, who's having himself another outstanding afternoon for Georgia, punting the football, averaging 49 yards, almost 50 per punt. There's 83, Eric Pitts. Good pressure, but a great punt under 
pressure by Andrews. Pitts at his 25. Got some good blocks. Matter of fact, one of them was too good according to the official on the spot. He throws a flag. No doubt that will be clipping. And McCluskey makes his fourth special teams tackle of the afternoon for Georgia. The backup fullback. A 50-yard punt by Chip Andrews. And Kentucky's going to put themselves into a hole. Here's the announcement, Mac Gentry. Clippy! Returning team! Let's see if we can pick this one up. We're going to see it again. They got it. Number 95 right there is who they called it on. You know, and uh, I think that was kind of inconsequential. That's a, that's a big penalty for that insignificant uh, an occurrence, in my opinion. Number 95, Matt Steins, the man who had the flag thrown on him. Uh, Scott Williams was called for a clip earlier today, also on one that was very close. They have equaled it between the two teams. Clipping! Receiving team! Back to the 11 and a half yard line, and, and Tim, you were talking about what Kentucky has to do to try to get something going against the Dooley Dogs here, and this makes it even more difficult deep within their 15 yard line. You're less likely to be adventuresome down here, that's for sure. They do spread it out in a slot left formation, but hand the ball to George Adams. He gets a yard or two and not much more. Henry Harris, number 52, and at the nose guard position for Georgia making the stop. Georgia has tightened up that, that 60 defensive look on them today. They're making it very difficult up the middle. They certainly are. As we mentioned earlier, Bill Lewis has moved his defense in a half a man. Now, what, is, what that means is that instead of lining up on the inside shoulder of the defensive end, for example, you'd line up on the outside shoulder of the tackle. You're just a couple yards in closer, and then they're pinching. Second down eight, Kentucky with split backs now. Good pressure. Ramsdell avoids the back. He completes it to Derry for the first down and more to the 28 yard line. Fullback Chris Derry. John Little with the stop for Georgia. Ransdell under intense Bulldog pressure. Got away the pass. This is what they like about this guy's John. He's got kind of a John Wayne mentality. He'll stand in there. If he tries to get out, he continues to look downfield and he finds Derry open. And look at Derry. They may start handing him the ball. That's a good run by Chris Derry. He had only three catches all year and only four carries before this ball game. Here's George Adams. Cutting against the grain, nothing. Georgia really covering well. And Steve Boswell having himself a whale of an afternoon at linebacker in place of Bill Mitchell, number 44, with his fifth tackle. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is Superstation WTBS Atlanta from Turner Broadcasting System. We're back. Kentucky's back. Second down 11 from the 26. Bulldogs 13. Wildcats nothing. 5.49 to go. Third quarter from Lexington. Randall. Quick cross to Adams. To the 36-yard line. Short of the first down. And Steve Boswell with another tackle. Boswell dropping to his zone, reacting as the ball is thrown on Adams. They're having a hard time getting their running game on track, Bob. I think you're going to see a little bit more of that possession-type passing, ball control passing. Just, just a, same thing that Mississippi has done so effectively. Speaking of possession, this is third down two. Kentucky has not converted on third down yet today. Randall. Incomplete. They do not do it again. Kentucky, zero for eight on third down play. And that has been part of their the story in Kentucky's inability to maintain a drive against the Bulldogs today. Pass was intended for Pitts, Harris covering, and Ransdell now 11 out of 17. Now remember last week when Kentucky stalled, they inserted quarterback Kevin Dooley, a freshman, who came in and drove for two touchdowns. Of course, Kentucky does not want to do that, but we might keep it in mind. Here's Calhoun. Pretty good distance on this punt to Harrell. It was kind of a line drive at his 24. Harrell up the middle. They're going to have to catch him from behind. Jimmy Harrell, touchdown, Georgia. He took it at his 24, 76 yards. Jimmy Harrell, the Bulldogs blow it open, 19 to nothing. 
This is where we're supposed to be quiet for the crowd response, right, Bob? <laughs> the Kentucky crowd is awfully quiet. Excellent job. The ball was kicked low and outdistance the coverage a little bit, but a fine job of blocking by Georgia. Sprung Herald, and then when you have that return on up the middle, fewer players have an angle on the man with the ball. Takes it all away. Got him. Escort there, Kevin Harris. This has been a weak spot for Kentucky. They have given up 134 yards and punt returns coming into this game. The point after is good by Butler. It is Georgia 20, Kentucky nothing. 451 remaining in quarter number three from Lexington. All those Bulldog fans are glad they made the trip. About a nine-hour drive from Athens. This buds for everyone who keeps things rolling on the mighty Mississippi. Breakaway bars, breakaway bars, please respond. Get him. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. Some make greatness look simple. Like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70. With the pure agility, the complete versatility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring new Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. Number 82, Jimmy Harrell. He is a on this team to do just this. And he does it well. Calhoun knocked it deep, not too high. Gave this return a chance to form. And once you crack it up the middle, there's usually no catching you. It's kind of an interesting story. Harrell is in there. He and Lane are punt returners. Lane had a fumble last week against Vanderbilt that made the coaches a little nervous. They said they wanted to put Harrell in there, particularly when it was inside their own 30 to take the punt, because he said, you know, he only gets us five or six yards, but Jimmy will catch it. We'll take the six. How about 76? A beautiful return. Mark Logan. He's going to try and return himself. Needs some blocks. Doesn't get them. Knocked out of bounds down here at the 22-yard line by John Brantley for the Bulldogs. So Kentucky trails 20 to nothing now. We're going to go to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. T TCU leads the nation in offense, and this is the reason why a beautiful option. Anthony Sharafa pitches out to Kenny Davis, and he goes untouched down the sideline. 60 yards. They're now in front 14 to 13. Back to the game. Well, the Horned Frogs are back. What a season they're having. Randall, plenty of time this time. There's Joe Phillips, and he just missed him. Phillips had an opportunity to go all the way to the Kentucky end zone. Could he have made connection? Sanchez was covering, but Randall simply overthrew him. Here's a great view of it. You see the Georgia linebackers dropping to their zones. Sanchez is deep. Reacting on the ball, it looks like a two-deep zone. Sanchez back on the hash, reacting to the ball overthrown. Can't get there in time to make the interception. Too high for Joker Joe to pull it down. Second down, 10, Kentucky. Rams come out 11 of 19 for 112 yards. Pressure from Waters completes the pass anyway for a gain of about five out to the 28-yard line. And that is Chris Derry. And Chris Derry's having himself a career catching the pass this afternoon. That is his third reception. He had only three all year until today. It was Hewitt who gave the pressure to Rand. Another play we're seeing in there for the Georgia defense that has been injured, was injured in the preseason is Andy Loy. Getting some playing time for Calvin Ruff. Third down four. Remember, Kentucky, zero for eight. Converting third down to first down this afternoon. down Boswell with another tackle he may be short of the first down though we'll have to watch for the spot as you can see it's down in front of the Kentucky bench they may have to bring the sticks in I think they're gonna do that by the way we appreciate your viewing wherever you may be watching our TBS sports production of Southeastern Conference football and there's a couple of Bulldog fans out in Oklahoma City who are regular viewers Courtney and Betty White and Virginia and Don Copeland want to say hello to in Oklahoma City how about that 
Did they send you your cowboy boots? <laughs> no, no, they did not. <laughs> but they could. No, they can't, because that'd be illegal. Don't do that. <laughs> it is a first down, and that's the first time this afternoon that Kentucky has converted a third down into a first down. You mentioned Andy Loy, who had been hurt. Uh, Loy is... Uh, the youngster who got into the altercation as you look at the quarterback comparison with Bill Mitchell, the suspended linebacker. They were really just celebrating a little bit too much, or as was Mitchell and Loy just kind of broke it up. They've remained friends. Mitchell's taking his punishment like a man and may be back with his Bulldog team for the game next week. Not much for Adams, maybe a loss of a yard. Harris with a tackle. One thing Bill Mitchell's probably seeing, and I'm sure pulling for, is that is his replacement Steve Boswell has had a whale of a game here this afternoon seizing the opportunity Kentucky trying to redirect their running attack a little bit trying to get it outside they see the alignment of the Georgia football team but they're not able to do that either this is second down 11 for Kentucky from the Kentucky 31 bottled up inside their 50 most of the afternoon Ransel under pressure again always running for his life throwing on the run incomplete at midfield Tried to get it to Cisco Bryant. Watch number 76 with his pass rush here. Donald Chumley. Chumley takes it inside the offensive lineman. That gives Ramsdell an opportunity to break the, the containment of the pass rush. Now, Chumley will get in trouble for that. Even though he put pressure on the uh, quarterback, he's responsible for keeping that quarterback in the pocket. He won't get in big trouble, just a little bit. <laughs> Third down conversions. Neither team's been very successful with it today, but Georgia's converted a lot of first downs on their first and second, which makes that statistic for Georgia look a little bit misleading. Here is number 25, Mark Logan. Getting a few yards. Culpepper with the Georgia tackle. That was on third down and draws booze from the Wildcat crowd here. Not converting there, and Kentucky a little bit gun-shy of a turnover here with Ransel having thrown two interceptions this afternoon, and Calhoun comes in to punt again, and Calhoun has had a workout this afternoon as Ransel tries to get his act together. Calhoun will be in for his one, two, three, four, seventh punt of the afternoon. Well, people are booing in, in the sense they probably felt like sh they should have thrown it on third down, a little, been a little bit more aggressive. What they're trying to do is catch him in a blitz and trap it and get a big running play. They felt like they had an opportunity to do that. Didn't work out. Georgia leads 20 to nothing, 2.37 to go in the quarter, and Jimmy Harrell had a 76-yard punt return the last time he touched the ball. Georgia has three men back there with him that will kind of form a wall in front of him as he catches the ball, giving him time to make a couple of moves. From the 23, Harrell goes down immediately. That 76-yarder got the Wildcats' attention. Tony Mays was the first man down to make the stop on Harrell, who's a senior from Somerville, South Carolina. The score, Georgia 20, Kentucky nothing, 2.18 to go, third quarter. This is Turner Network Television. Oh,